Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at this. Now this is the British Army's first proper poncho design. Prior to the 1944 pattern poncho, you of course had the ground sheet cape, the Mark 7 ground sheet, uh, the ground sheet cape being the sort of colloquial name for it because it could be buttoned around the body as a cape introduced during the Great War and actually still issued through into the 1950s. You also have the monsoon cape for issue in the Far East. Now this was obviously an injury produced item which was used during the Second World War. It was a cape, it buttoned around the body, had arm slits and so forth. As part of the late war jungle equipment, which is something that's been covered quite a bit on the channel recently, a new design was introduced and that's what we have here, the 1944 pattern poncho. Like some other elements of the late war jungle kit, based on American practice, based on American design, but it doesn't have a hood. That's one thing that differentiates it from the American poncho design. And it is a poncho, it's put on over the body and obviously over the head uh, and your head pops out the hole at the top. The design uh, does include several features which were included on later British poncho designs which we'll see as we move this around and have a look at the details and also it was intended for use as an, a part of the anti-gas kit in the Far East as well had the late war jungle kit seen use before the end of the Second World War. There was a real fear of course that Japan would use poison gas as a last ditch weapon as the Japanese mainland itself came under threat and the invasion seemed imminent. And as a result of this, the poncho does include features which allow it to be used as part of an anti-gas uh, protective clothing. Uh, we'll have a look at the details of that as well as we move this round. So looking at the various features of this, obviously as it looks on the mannequin now, it's just a big green piece of rubberized canvas. Uh, and that's exactly what it is basically. It's designed to be used as a shelter and to be worn like this. We have at the neck here, from the point of view of it being warm, we have a draw cord, you can see that here, which is a piece of, um, a couple of pieces of, of thick whip cord there with a rubber tab. And this is just a piece of rubber with two holes worked into it to allow you to pull that tight around the neck. You can see that that section there is stitched on. So the, the, this sort of cowl around the neck here is a separate section stitched on. You can also see we have a seam running down the front here. Around the edge, around the, the edge of the poncho here, we have eyelets at the corners and one in the centre here as well and then another one at the corner there and a mirror image on the rear. You also have them in the centres of each side here, another one there. And they basically alternate down the side with press studs. And this is a feature which would be carried across to later ponchos in British service. And this allows them to be connected together. So you have a male press stud on the outside and then the rear of of that is a female press stud, which means you can snap two of these together and make a bigger shelter with two men coming together to make it a larger shelter or indeed more and you can end up making quite a large shelter out of these. One big issue with these and later ponchos in terms of using them as a shelter is the hole for the, the neck and this is this is an issue trying to tie this closed and actually keep it watertight when using this as a shelter is somewhat difficult. It's a little easier on the later examples that had hoods there's a bit more cloth there to tie up and try and uh, bundle together to keep it watertight uh, but as I say these are designed as a poncho so they are designed to be worn as well they aren't just designed as a shelter but from the point of view of using them as a shelter that is actually a failing of the design. So you can connect them together you have various eyelets and so forth around the outside to allow you to string these up and make a shelter out of them. That's the front of the, the poncho here we've had a look at the, the outer edge we'll just turn this around now and have a look at the back and then obviously turn it inside out and have a look at the interior details as well. Looking at the back of the poncho here, you can see a seam running down the rear as well. It's made of two pieces there. We actually have a name and number written up on the collar here, W. Grosvenor, and then the number underneath. Looking at the interior of this, we can see here that all the seams are taped and glued to make them waterproof. You can see that down the front here and around at the collar here as well. You can see just the section doubled over at the side there to make the, the channel for the draw cord at the neck. And then at the the hem here we can see just a little bit more clearly that this is doubled over and also glued uh, to make a strengthened section for the eyelets and the press studs to be attached to around the edge there. So you have press studs at the side and eyelets front and back uh, to allow this to, as I say, to be connected together. A feature here which is specific to the role of the poncho as a part of the anti-gas equipment is this pocket on the inside here. Fastens with a single press stud at the top there. It's relatively small pocket worked in there. You can see how securely this is attached using a glued section around here to strengthen and then sewn on. This is to carry a tin of anti-gas ointment and obviously the cotton waste associated with it so that this could be used as an anti-gas cape uh, and this, this would allow you to have protected underneath inside cotton waste 
an anti-gas ointment to treat basically basic mustard, mustard gas essentially. Uh, the ointment is applied, you know, you slough off the, the excess uh, liquid from the skin where you've been affected by, by mustard gas and then you apply the ointment to try and prevent the, the, the burns from, from occurring from that, the, uh, the blistering effect of that on the skin and that's what would be carried in here. So a specific part of the design intended to allow this to be used as a part of the anti-gas kit in the Far East, as I say, stemming from very real fears that Japan would use uh, and gas, gas warfare as a, as a last ditch attempt to prevent the invasion of Japan itself, which never took place, of course, in the end. So there we are, that's the interior of the front. We'll just turn this around now and have a look at the back by way of completeness. Looking at the back here, there's not a huge amount more to see, just more details of these glued seams and so forth. You can see the main seam running down the back there and the detail of that running up the collar here, obviously also formed from two pieces. That's basically it for the, the interior details of the poncho. So there we are, that was a look at the 1944 pattern British Army poncho. As I say, a new development for the British Army as part of the late war jungle kit. There hadn't really been anything like this uh, in, on issue before and it did set the pattern for certain features which were carried forward to the 1962 pattern and then the lightweight nylon poncho that were introduced later on during the Cold War. So hopefully it's been interesting looking at this. If you have found it interesting looking at this and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated as I always say, thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down in the description as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.